This is admittedly a little weird, but to tell you a story about Portland's street response team, I have to show you video from Eugene. That's for two reasons. Number one, the street response team is based off of a program in Eugene called Cahoots. For decades, it's let 911 operators here send teams of paramedics and mental health professionals to calls involving homelessness, drug use, and mental health emergencies. Things that aren't violent, but in most cities fall into the laps of local police. Not here. The second reason we're showing you this video is because Portland's street response team isn't a reality yet. The city had set aside half a million dollars to get it up and running in the spring of this year, but like most things, the pandemic brought that to a grinding halt. My, my heart wanted to go out, but I didn't want to do anything that might hurt um, the program or myself. I didn't it's want made Tremaine uh, Clayton's job sort of awkward. To, uh, After the city announced plans to officially fund the project last year, Clayton was the first paramedic with Portland Fire allocated to the city's street response team. A project similar to Cahoots, it aims at forming a more sensitive response to emergencies that arise in a housing crisis. It's also designed to give police some relief from having to serve as social workers, instead letting them focus on violent crimes. But thanks to coronavirus and to the city's subsequent hiring freeze, efforts to launch this team this year froze too. For months, Clayton has been literally the only person on it. Um, so I just maintain just the administrative side of it. Um, not so much the outreach that I had been doing. But um, now that's on track to change. <laughs> Protests, riots, and national conversations about community policing are pushing cities to rethink long-held spending norms, especially when it comes to using taxpayer dollars to protect the taxpayers. Here in Portland, Commissioner Joanne Hardesty came out with a big pitch, pushing the city to cut $4.8 million from the police bureau and instead use it to beef up and finally launch the street response team. If she gets her way, and if the city lifts its hiring freeze, Portland could have six teams of paramedics and mental health experts responding to 911 calls by this fall. I'm hoping that we're starting to shift the conversation from law and order to public health. And so if you're looking at um, what's happening on our street through a public health lens, your job is to do no harm. The council's budget vote is tomorrow. Hardesty expects the move to be approved. That said, she wants to be clear. This is one of several changes she wants to see made to address the pain and rage rippling throughout this country. I don't think that the Portland street response will address the historic racist white supremacist policies that have been in place since the United States of America was born. It won't do anything to change that dynamic at all. But what we know is that people targeted for arrests, targeted for severe sentencing, are black and brown people. So anything we can do to make sure that we are diverting people from an unjust criminal justice system will help everyone. So Maggie Vespa joining us now. I know there are a few things that have to happen, but it kind of sounds like this is a go. Yeah, Hardesty definitely thinks so. And Clayton does too. And basically, you know, there has been a debate in this budget process about how much money to take away from the police bureau, but this $4.8 million for the street response team specifically hasn't been a point of contention. So it definitely seems like this is a go. And again, that vote is tomorrow. Right. Uh, and it sounds like your, your um, conversation with Tremaine Clayton was really interesting as well. Yeah, it was. And I, I want to play more of it now. Uh, you know, because the, the street response team focuses on mental health. And right now, as a nation, we're obviously having a conversation, a needed conversation about race. Still, Clayton was and is the first member of this program that was born out of a desire to have a better sort of strategy around community policing. Um, and then, you know, that program was sidelined because of the pandemic. And then in the meantime, this conversation about police tactics and all this anger exploded. So he's just kind of been on the sidelines watching this and so basically i just asked him what that's been like yeah i mean it's it's definitely one of those things where it's hard i i i've had my personal struggles growing up um being mixed uh definitely questions more than average uh than most of my friends so to have but on the professional side i have a great working relationship with portland police specifically and so it's really just 
I really do feel for a lot of the police officers just being in this unfortunate event um, of, of divide. Yes, this will have an impact on those on those marginalized communities. I mean, it's it, the, the focus really was the mental health that, as a marginalized community, homelessness as a marginalized community. But now we're bringing in this racial component that has always been underlying. Um, and I think that was just kind of the, the core release. So, I mean, all those problems we were focusing on, I think this this definitely like it, you can't ignore it now. You yeah. can't ignore it now. So. All right, and per usual, we will have so much more on this story and more from our interviews at KGW.com, Dan. All right, and uh, look for it there. And also uh, remember to follow Maggie on all the social platforms. Maggie, thank you. Sure.